All right, we're gonna be looking at graphs of simple rational functions, um, which are transformations of the parent function y equals one over x. So go ahead and pause this video and make sure you are able to graph y equals one over x. Um, you should have done it in a previous homework. You should know kind of the essential features of it. Um, and you're welcome to just graph it as is. If you um, need a place to start, you can of course make a table by choosing different x values. Um, and I can su suggest some for you. You can, you can put in x equals 1, 2, 3, 10 to get a sense of what's going on here and see what y's come out and put those on a graph. Uh, you might also want to choose some fractions like 1 half, 1 tenth, um, and maybe some negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1 third. So this is a suggestion for what, um, what values you should choose to put in for x. So pause the video, make sure you can uh, graph this and... and have the attributes. Okay, so hopefully you graph something like this and I'm gonna highlight the key features. When x is one, y is one, and this is gonna be one of our important points, one comma one. Um, and then as the x gets bigger and bigger, one half, one third, one tenth, the y values get smaller and smaller and smaller, but never quite reach zero. Uh, if you're doing like one divided by a million, it's going to be very close to zero, but not quite zero. When we start getting into the fraction side, one divided by one half is the same as one times two over one, which is two. So when x is one half, the y value goes up to two. And when x is even smaller fractions, the y values go up and up and up. I guess I should have added another important point here, which is zero. And when x is zero, y is undefined. Uh, because one divided by zero, you're not allowed to divide by zero. And so we end up with um, a couple of key features. One is there is a vertical asymptote here. Um, I'm going to write vertical asymptote. Uh, and in this video and in the future, I'm going to be referring to this as a VA, vertical asymptote, is x equals zero. The vertical asymptote is x equals zero. Uh, I don't want to write out vertical asymptote the whole time. And there's also another asymptote here. There's a horizontal asymptote. I'll write it out in case somebody doesn't have sound here. Um, horizontal asymptote. And that's at y equals zero. That's the equation of the horizontal asymptote. When we go to the negative side, um, when x is negative one, y is negative one. One divided by negative one is negative one. And we end up, when we plug in other points, see very similar features. The bigger a negative number you divide by, the um, closer to zero you get. And when you divide by negative fractions, the numbers end up producing very large negative numbers. And it follows these same asymptotes, x equals zero and y equals zero. Um, we might want to discuss a few things about this. We might want to say, what is the, uh, we've already said the asymptotes. We might want to say the domain and the range. The domain, is all the possible x values, and we'll notice it keeps going to the left forever. So it goes from negative infinity, the x values go from negative infinity until zero. There is no, you can't put zero in for x because you would be dividing by zero, so that is not in the domain. But then it starts back up again on the other side of zero. So we put a union, this is a union symbol, it means all the numbers between negative infinity to zero, and then also all the numbers between zero and infinity. But because we didn't use a bracket here, it doesn't include zero, and so zero is not part of the domain. The range is the same thing. All right, we might also want to talk about um, the direction. So is the function increasing or decreasing? So the direction. And as we read from left to right, we can see that the function is decreasing. Now it's only decreasing until we get to zero. So it's uh, decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to zero, um, because then there's a break here. And then when it starts back up again, it's actually still decreasing. But it wasn't decreasing at zero because there was no point there. So it's actually decreasing on the entire domain. Everywhere there's an x value, the function is, as you go from left to right, the function is always decreasing. And at zero, there's this big jump. Um, we might want to talk about the concavity. The concavity is how is the function bending? And so we can see that the function is bending down. If I took a straight line, I would have to bend it down to make it this shape. So it's concave down. 
on the interval, concave down on the interval from negative infinity to zero. And then on the other side, it's decreasing, but it's now bending up. So you would have to take this and actually bend it up. Um, and so it's concave up on the interval from zero to infinity. Okay. So that's what's going on there. Now let's, we're going to look at, oh, let's also talk about the limits. So there's a couple, I'm going to write four limits here. The first limit is going to be here. This is the limit, uh, I'm going to call this f of x, uh, I'll just call it the limit of y. The limit of the y values, what is the y value getting closer to as x goes towards infinity? As x goes further and further and further to the right, the y values are getting closer and closer to zero. There's another limit on this end. We talked about this a little bit with polynomials. As So the limit, the limiting value of y as x goes closer and closer to negative infinity as x keeps going to the left, the y values go towards zero from the negative side. There's also two other limits on these two ends. Uh, and I'm going to write this one right here. I'm going to write it right here. This is the limiting value of y as x gets closer to zero, but from the positive side, we put as x goes to zero plus, it means 0. 0.00001 rather than going to zero from the left side where it's like negative 0. 0.0001. And that y value is going up towards infinity. And this end, down at the bottom here, this is the limit of y as x goes towards zero from the left side. That limiting value is negative infinity. Okay, so that should be what we are already familiar with, with the parent function. And again, we're going to focus on these two key points. 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1, as well as the asymptotes, and that will allow us to do our transformations. So uh, let's get into that. Um, let's graph y equals 1 over x minus 2 minus 3. Okay. And before we graph that, let's just think to ourselves, how would this compare if it was a square root function? Well, um, this square root function would be compared to the parent function by getting shifted right by 2 and down by 3. So it's shifted down by 3 and shifted right by 2. Um, because the x is getting subtracted by 2 before you take the square root, and then the minus 3 is coming after you do the function, the parent function. The same thing is happening here. Um, this is a transformation of y equals 1 over x. But before you do 1 over the x, you're subtracting the x by 2. And so this is going to be right by 2. And then after you do 1 over x, after you do the, the function 1 over the x, um, you're subtracting 3, and so it'll shift down by 3. So let's look at how that looks on a graph. I'm going to start by changing the asymptotes. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 in the parent function, but it gets shifted to the right by 2 and down by 3. A vertical line that's infinite gets shifted right by 2, and then down by 3, but down by 3 doesn't actually do anything because it's an infinite line. And so our new asymptote is at x equals positive 2. That's where our new asymptote is going to be. The other asymptote from the parent function is at y equals 0, and that's going to shift right by 2, which doesn't do anything, and down by 3. And so we have a new asymptote at y equals negative 3. Uh, on the parent function, there is a point at 1, 1. Um, and that point gets shifted 2 to the right and 1, 2, 3 down. And you'll notice it's still 1 over and 1 up from the um, where the asymptotes intersected. So you can kind of think of like where the asymptotes intersect is where 0, 0 was. And so 1 over and 1 up from there is where that point 1, 1 will be. And uh, we can just go ahead and graph from there, okay? Um, we can use that shortcut trick of realizing that this is basically where zero, zero is and go left by one and down by one to get to our point that would have been at negative one, negative one uh, to get the other side of this. But if we had really wanted to, we could have taken the original point from the parent function that was at negative one, negative one and shifted it one, two to the right and uh, one, two, three down and end up at the same place. So that's our graph. 
Um, <clears throat> the domain is going to be all the numbers between negative infinity. It's going to keep going to the left forever. And 2. And then all the x values again from 2 to infinity. And the range is going to be all the numbers between negative infinity, because the y's keep going down, up until you reach the y value of negative 3. There's no y value at negative 3. And then again, from negative 3 up to infinity. So those are the y values. Um, this function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative, uh, from negative infinity to 2. And then it's also decreasing from 2 to infinity. The function is concave down from negative infinity to 2 and then concave up from uh, 2 to infinity. Um, and the limits, as x goes to, I'm going to write this, the limit of y as x goes towards infinity is the y value is getting closer and closer and closer to negative 3. Um, on this other side, the limit as x goes towards negative infinity of y is equal to negative 3 also. And here, as x is getting closer and closer and closer to 2 from the right side, the y value is getting going up to infinity, and this limit is as x goes towards 2 from the left side. As x is getting closer to 2 from the left side, the y value is getting closer to negative infinity. So those are kind of our key features we should have here. All right, why don't you try one, pause the video, and try to graph um, y equals, this will be a little harder, y equals negative, this is the part that makes it a little bit harder, 1 over x minus 3 uh, minus 1. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. See if you can graph this yourself. See if you can do the domain, the range, the limits, the concavity, the direction. And then unpause your video. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do this. Um, the function is getting shifted 3 to the right, and so the vertical asymptote is now going to be at x equals 3. The function is getting shifted down by 1, and so the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 1. And what this negative does, of course, is it reflects it across the y-axis. So instead of there being a point, again, I'm going to consider this kind of 0, 0, that is uh, where the asymptotes intersect, and this would be 1, 1, but it got reflected. And so instead of there being a point at, uh, at 1, 1, it, if it gets re reflected across the x-axis, it'll be at 1, negative 1, and the whole thing got reflected down. So basically, um, instead of looking like this, it got reflected across where the x-axis would have been and uh, is now underneath the asymptote. Similarly, the point at negative 1, negative 1 gets reflected across to the other side of the asymptote and will look like this, oh my gosh. Okay. And so that's what our graph should look like. Um, the domain is all the x values from negative infinity to 3 and all the x values from 3 to infinity. Um, and, and hopefully you don't have any more questions about domain range, stuff like that. I, I'm trying to keep this video a little shorter than it's going to go if I go over every part of everything. Hopefully you have it. If you don't, you can ask some questions about it next class. All right, let's look at one more transformation. Let's do 3 over x plus 4. First of all, we can see it shifted to the left by 4. The question is, what is this 3 doing? And this is the same as 3 times 1 over x plus 4, because 3 can be rewritten as 3 over 1. And you can see that 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times x plus 4 is just x plus 4. And so this is the same as 3 over x plus 4. So this and this are the same. And so now we can see this is a vertical stretch. All of the y values are going to get multiplied by 3 from where they would have been. So the function gets shifted 4 to the left. I'm going to put an asymptote at x equals negative 4. The function didn't get shifted up at all, and so the parent function still would have had a um, horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and so will this function. And the big difference here is that it's getting multiplied by 3. And so instead of having a point at 1, 1, this is where it would normally be. That 1 is going to get multiplied by 3, and so there will be an actual y value at 1, 3. 
and that's good enough for us for now. Um, if you want to draw a little bit better graph, you, you like my graph is not perfect here, uh, there will also be a point at 3 comma 1, and the reason it'll have a three po point at 3 comma 1 is because 3 divided by 3 equals 1. So like when the x value is 3 away from the asymptote, you'll get a y value of 1. Um, and the same thing happens on the left side. Normally we would have a point at negative 1, negative 1, but that negative 1 is going to get multiplied by 3 and go down to negative 3. And so we end up with a stretched thing. I wish I had some graph paper, but my graph paper is all at school and I'm not able to go get it. So this is not ideal, but that's what it is. So those are the transformations. Um, all right. The second thing we're going to talk about is some special things that don't quite look like transformations of the parent function. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is what if we have something like y equals x plus 7 divided by x plus 3. And when I look at this, it kind of looks like a transformation, but is, is it getting shifted? There's The parent function doesn't have an x in the numerator. The parent If this were just 7 divided by x plus 3, this would be a transformation of the parent function y equals 1 over x because the x gets added by 3 and then multiplied by 7. So it would be stretched. But because of this x on top, it is not a transformation, or at least it doesn't look like it. Luckily, there is something we can do here that we already know. When the degree of the numerator is a is at least as big as the degree of the denominator, we can do long division. We can actually do x plus 7 divided by x plus 3, and this is fairly easy to do. Um, what will happen is we can simplify this by saying x goes into x one time, and I multiply 1 times x plus 3. This is from our polynomials unit. 1 times x, one, 1 times 3 is x plus 3. And I'm going to subtract this. x minus x is 0. 7 minus 3 is 4. And so there is a remainder of 4 because x can't go into 4. And so this is 1 plus 4 is still getting divided by x plus 3. And so this whole function, x plus 7 divided by x plus 3, is the same as 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 3. And now this is a transformation of the parent function. It's getting multiplied by 4 shifted to the left by 3, and shifted up by 1. Um, and so the graph, you know, is going to be shifted 3 to the left, 1 up. That's where the asymptotes are going to be. And then it gets stretched by a factor of 4. So instead of having a point at 1, 1, it'll be 1 over and 1, 2, 3, 4 up from uh, the, where the asymptotes are. And then it'll just follow the asymptotes. It'll be 1, oh, you can't see that, oh my goodness. 1 over and 4 up from the asymptote. And then the point at negative 1, 1 would be negative 1, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4 from the asymptote. So it looks like this. That's what our graph looks like. So that's sometimes um, if it looks like it's not a transformation of the parent function, you might need to do long division. There's one other trick we might need. And for this, we need to actually do some examining something. Um, this is another simple rational function y equals x over x that is going to do something special. I'm going to make, this is going to be the last thing we're going to do in this video. I'm going to make a table real quick. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 half, 1, 2, 100. And, when, and I'm going to make a graph here. When x is negative 3, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. When x is negative 2, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. When x is negative 1, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. And you might be thinking to yourself at this point, is it always going to be 1? Well, like negative 57.6 divided by negative 57.6 is also 1. But there is one exception. So in fact, all of these in-between points, so negative 1.7 divided by negative 1.7 is 1. All of these in-between points are also 1. But when you get to 0, 0 divided by 0 is not 1 because you are not allowed to divide by 0. This is undefined. It is an excluded value from the domain because we're dividing by 0 there. And so it makes a very odd feature in the graph where there is no point here. And then it goes back to 1 half divided by 1 half is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 100 divided by 100 is 1, and it goes back to this 
shape. So it's one everywhere. So it's it's going to be one, 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 one in the table, except at zero where there is no value. And so we put a blank circle there because there is no value. Um, and this is called a hole, or it's also called, and we'll learn why later, a removable discontinuity. It's a hole because it looks like a hole, and it's called a removable discontinuity because um, it's the function is not continuous here. Continuous is when there are no breaks in the graph, and uh, here there is a break in the graph. And we'll talk about why it's removable later. Okay, so that's that's cool. That's all well and good. But we can use this, and uh, paper, we can use this same idea to graph something like this. y equals x minus 4 over x minus 4. Well, this time if we make a table, if we plug in like 0 over 0, that's okay now. Zero, when we put in 0 for x, we'll get 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Uh, and we get negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. So now the zero point works. Where we're gonna run into trouble, so one will give us one because we'll get negative three divided by negative three. Two minus four is negative two divided by negative two is one. Three is one. But when we get to four, four is gonna be one of the excluded values from our domain because when we do four minus four, the denominator will be zero and we will be dividing by zero. So when x is four, zero divided by zero is undefined. And so this will look very similarly, where it'll be going along, but when x is 4, there will not be a point there, and we'll end up with a hole. Okay, so this is kind of cool, and we can see how this can affect our rational functions if we have something like this. f of x equals x squared minus 9 divided by, um, I don't know, I don't want to do that. Let's do x Sorry, sort of. That's, I don't have time for this video for that one. All right, let's do x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. Let's do it. That'll be a little simpler. And here, it doesn't look like a transformation of the parent function 1 over x. Um, and we can't do long division because x minus 3 being divided by x squared minus 9, this degree is bigger, and so x squared doesn't go into x. So this doesn't work because the denominator is bigger than the numerator. It'd be like trying to divide five sevenths and, and trying to like be like, oh, you know, whatever. Not helpful. Um, so instead, we can use a technique called factoring, which hopefully we're very good at. This is the difference of two squares. So x minus 3 times x plus 3. And what we can see here is that there's a factor of x minus 3 in both. And I'm going to rewrite this. This is equal to x minus 3 over x minus 3 times 1 over x plus 3. And from our excluded value section, we kind of lied and said we could simplify this by canceling this out. And we said it, well, we didn't lie. I think we were careful about it. We said it was 1 over x plus 3, but we had to be careful. We had to say when x does not equal 3 or negative 3. So that was from our homework a couple times ago, 12.1, I think, or 12.2. I'm not sure. Um, we said x couldn't be 3 or negative 3 because when x is 3, we'll end up with... Um, actually, this is going to create a hole or a removable discontinuity. Um, but everywhere else, it will do nothing. It will just be y equals 1 over x plus 3, but with a hole in it. Um, and to see that, if we plug in... So I'm claiming that this is equal to y equals x plus 3 as long as x doesn't equal 3. So if x is equal to 5, let's say, uh, let's do f of 5. f of 5 is uh, 2 divided by 2 times 1 over 2 plus 3 is 5. And 2 over 2 is 1. 1 times 1 fifth is just 1 fifth. And that's the exact same thing you'd get if you just plugged in 2 here. Um, you can see that almost any number you plug in here will give you the same number divided by the same number, which will always give us 1. The one exception is that when x equals 3, we will get 0 over 0 times 1 over 6. And this is undefined. Uh, you can't do 0 divided by 0, and an undefined number times 1 6 is still undefined. And so what this graph is going to look like 
is it will look exactly like the graph of 1 over x plus 3. Uh, so shifted left by 3, not shifted up or down at all. So it looks like the parent function here. Except when x equals 3, when x equals 3, there will be a hole. And we'll talk about this more in a future video, but I hope we can see why. Because x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is almost always going to cancel out and become just 1. But when x equals 3, we have to consider the fact that it's making you do 0 divided by 0, which is undefined, and so it makes there not be a place in this. The way we would say the domain of this graph is the y values go from negative infinity to negative 3. Union, the y value, or sorry, the x values go from negative 3 to 3. Union, 3 to infinity. So we had to break it up into three parts there. I'm going to stop this video because it's already very long and I'm worried it's not going to upload correctly. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, this homework will be due on Wednesday and you'll be able to ask questions on this uh, on Wednesday.